let's take a look at uh, a game that Maureen submitted, by the way, because she submitted a game against Elizabeth Cassidy, who I don't think is here today, but we know that she's a regular in these sessions and the tape will be available later. So she can also look at the game. Uh, it was a very interesting game. So Maureen played the London opening um, and the Jabova variation of the London opening with knight c3. I wish Elizabeth were here because I don't like that she allowed e4 here that much. I mean, I guess it's okay because bishop f4 is not necessarily the most testing variation of the perk variation. But I think that you don't want to get tricked into uh, an opening that you weren't prepared for. Like in particular, if white were to start with knight c3, I would really hate this move because now it's just like a perk. And I'm very confident that Elizabeth plays the Sicilian, not the perk. Very confident of that because I've seen many Sicilians by her. You know, she's influenced by Pontus. She also has a very aggressive style. So uh, switching it up to the perk because you got tricked a little bit by your opponent's not ideal. What do you think, Pontus, though? All that said, I know Bishop F4 is not the best line against the perk. So maybe this is OK. What do you think? Well, I mean, this is um, it's a very valid point that you can get tricked here into something that you don't play. So um, the best way to avoid that is to play d5 instead. Yeah. Um, if, but the, the, the issue is that this is also a, a lie. This is what's called job of a London, which is, uh, yeah, it's also a bit tricky, actually. Uh, and there, there are a bunch of ideas here, even with knight b5 here, actually. It's, 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 even that is playable here. Uh, and then they go knight a6, and uh, usually white goes a4 and, and, and argues that the knight is completely misplaced on a6. Yeah. So, you can, so, so it's like, this is also an opening, but, but uh, here, uh, white cannot take the center. So you cannot get tricked into playing uh, the perk, but the perk is it, it's is definitely a um, completely valid opening as well. So it's it's not that you uh, you are like lost or something like this. It's it's just uh, that you can be tricked into something that you don't know. So exactly, well. exactly. And the perk is a good opening, absolutely. But it's not. Let's be honest. It's not as good as the Sicilian. <laughs> and <laughs> I think you're biased. Ah, uh, yeah, but I, okay, the perk is more offbeat than the Sicilian, and on top of that, it it doesn't occupy the center as much, but the good thing about the perk is that a lot of times in the perk we're trying to play e5, right, and the bishop's on f4, so maybe Elizabeth was thinking about that, that, you know, this could be a better version of the perk, and I don't hate that mentality, I think that's smart, wish she was here to explain, but in any case, Maureen goes for goes for the king from the beginning. Okay, um, here we go. Yeah, the, the thing is that this is actually, you can play with bishop f4 uh, like this. This is a, it actually transposes uh, because you can play with bishop e3 and bishop g5 and you can get the same position. Yeah. You do bishop a, h6 here. So, the, so this is actually a, a sideline uh, that is very playable. If you do exactly this move that Maureen did here. Bishop h6, which is the best move. I love it. I love it because your bishop's not very good on f4. So it's like, why not just go for the attack right away? Yeah, I think it's great. Great. Yeah, great. and it's also the same as the Sicilian, you know, that you want yeah. to, if, if you play like the, we, we checked a bit the dragon in previous sessions. And this perk is very closely related. Black has this uh, giant bishop there on g7 that when you're playing white you like to to trade that one to just exchange it off because it's usually very strong and it can get really strong even if it's a bit blocked right now black has this idea of playing c5 as well which is a very common uh, way to hit the center because this is how it works with openings where you give up the center then you usually need to attack the center because you give here the white the chance to build up a strong center but your idea is to attack it with either e5 or c5. You just want to hit the center. And uh, more that. And by the way, Elizabeth did play e5, and now uh, Maureen took and played castle's queen side. Yeah. So yeah, she just uh, had the right plan there for sure. And now um, 
I was played E takes D4, which uh, allow, allows a queen takes D4, beautiful, beautifully placed queen. Um, so I'm assuming uh, knight C6 was played, yes, and then queen E3, perfect. It's all good moves uh, thus far. Yeah, yeah, very, uh, very smart so far, exactly. And now F3. Trying to bolster this and plan to play G4 and H4. Okay. Okay. So some very strong here play here by Maureen. And now we see um the move knight b4 by Elizabeth. Hmm. So she's trying to attack on this side of the board, which really makes a lot of sense. Um, and uh, Maureen decides to just play the move a3. Uh, to I actually think e5 was even stronger. Yeah, so Nate before e5, you can't take because of the pin. Um, so you probably have to go where here, like knight d5. Yeah, but the problem is that now you can take on d5. Take, nice. take. and then after and... rook d5 and queen d4, does that work? Yeah, no. you can, okay. um, you can actually decide here, you can go. Always, I think more or less, queen d4 is a good move. Yeah, maybe queen. Yeah, although maybe black's hanging. Oh, actually, right you have queen, there, g5, queen g5, queen g5 check. Queen g5 right? check. Yeah, that that's true. There so is. You, can, you can't do that. You can't do this actually. Yes, maybe, maybe. Maybe, maybe, maybe I'm wrong here. Actually, uh, you have to probably play different. It's yeah. probably a, a mistake actually after this move. It's funny because e5 looks like a really good move, but yeah, maybe it's not that not as good as we uh as we imagine. Although I have to no, say it's, it's it's quite bad actually. <laughs> it's funny. Uh yeah, because this this knight e5. I mean, it makes some sense black has good development. But although I have to say if I wanted to just play a chill move here, I would definitely instead of playing a3, I would definitely play king b1 because king b1 not only protects a2, but it also takes the king off this diagonal, which is really useful when we're castling queen side. Because castle and queen side is not completely complete until we move our king to v1, right? If anybody can come up with a saying for that, put it in the chat. Like, I know we have Laura, who's a songwriter, in, this, in the chat. Um, so I don't know, but the queen side castles is a really, really good move because it gets our rook to a good position, but the king can become punished on the c1 diagonal because it's wide open. But okay, uh, Maureen played a3. Gains a tempo, so also makes some sense. Um, knight a6, and now she played h4. I love it. Yeah, I think e5 was also an option there. Because uh, now we don't usually, have knight e5. Yeah. When the queen is left there, you, you, you look for this move all the time. The e5 move. Because that also forces the knight to move. And then, yeah. you know, now, for example, h4 is very interesting. Yeah, now we can play h4 for sure. Yeah, because the knight is... is uh, out of position, you can say. Yeah. So then h4 is very strong. When, when h4 comes now, you can do h4. And then basically the only way to really stop h5, which is a serious move, uh, is h5 by black. Yeah, you got to play h5, sure. And now, what should, uh, or what could y2, if I put it like that? Because we want to break through here. So girls, how can we break through? What's like an uh, what's like a an option for us breaking through here on the king side? So anyone uh, that has any suggestions of what we should play? Ah, Laura has a has a move. Um, she didn't chat it to me. She chatted it to you, maybe. Ah, okay, maybe to me. I, so yeah, she wants to play uh, G four, which is ah, excellent yeah. suggestion. Yeah. Great suggestion. Pawn, and... pawn sack here. And, and this is exactly how it works. And this is typical here because here we can see the logic as well. That white, black is really weak on the king side, doesn't have many pieces that defends the king. Then, of course, white should play there and not on the queen side. Yeah. So G4 so... is an excellent move because here the most important thing is that, that you open up lines towards the king and that your attack is speedy. Not number of pawns, and so, this is an excellent idea that uh, yeah you can say that white has borrowed from the Sicilian. 
This is a very common ID that you, you basically open up the H file and you sacrifice a couple of pawns. And then the white attack will be very dangerous. Yeah, it's very hard to defend, especially because there's no, like a lot of times the one defensive idea that black might have is to play like rook h8, but notice the knight on e8 is blocking the major pieces from protecting those squares. So this could just be completely losing. I mean, that's a problem when you mess up in lines like this as black, you could just be lost right away. Uh, let's see what happened in the game because we do have a few more games to go over after c5. Again, this is the thing, Maureen, you had a lot of really good ideas, but I think you forgot about the e5 idea. You were so focused in on the h5 idea that you forgot about this idea. And um, yeah, I mean, that's like a typical issue that people sometimes have that because there's one really good idea they have, they miss other good ideas. But just, you know, this awareness of the weakness of this file, like the rook and the queen looking down each other should distract you from thinking that there's only one good idea here. Um, that said, you played h5, and now Elizabeth finally got her queen off this death row, right? So it's good that she did that. Uh, but you now went for it. Yeah, and... this, this, this move was not the best. No. If you go back here, uh, because the black d6 pawn is very weak, uh, and black lacks counterplay here so there is no clear counterplay like black doesn't have any clear continuation so here the most important thing is to improve the pieces that are like you can say left behind because white has a very promising attack ongoing but there are a couple of pieces that are not participating like the you have the knight there on, on g1 for example so what mm -hmm. white would be interested in doing here is to transpose this knight to some square where it makes some difference and what uh, what square can that be anybody want to put in the chat where that knight can go improve its positioning yeah g5 could be a could be a square uh any other ideas e2 yeah. says charmaine E2 is a good idea, but where is it going? Because E2 itself is not that great. But mm -hmm. Bernice says G5, so she wants to go knight H3, knight G5. Yeah, that's a that's a possibility. I love that's that. Very, very good. normal possibility. Yeah. You usually want to combine it with queen H6 and knight H3, knight G5, for example. Yep. But mm -hmm. the the best square here, I think, is uh, F4 is also a very very interesting square. Yeah, knight to f4. Because if you go knight e2 and knight f4, then this idea with knight d5 becomes much more interesting. Yep, yep, absolutely. The problem with knight d5 is that actually trades in this position can really help your opponent. And again, I wish um, Elizabeth were here because this is a really key point. Now, normally bishops are a little bit better than knights, especially in like wide open positions. But this knight is actually a really important attacking piece. So in, oh, Maureen is back, good, because this is her game. <laughs> I think she lost connection there for a second. So um, instead of playing knight takes d5 here, which gave her um, some serious issues in the game, uh, she could have tried bishop takes d5, which would have given her a much better chance of defending. Right? Yeah, because this is much better, you know? Uh, because by the time... Better. The time you get this stuff on, the queen is coming to defend, right? So even if black has a small positional weakness because of this and this, they're not, they're not getting mated very often. Um, so that is a huge accomplishment compared to what we saw in the game, which uh, is a really big problem for Elizabeth if Maureen plays accurately. What do you guys think Maureen should play in this position? She has a few different options here. Um, or, uh, Bernice says G5. Is she talking about this position? I'm not sure if she means G4. That's from earlier. Okay, yeah. What would you do here, Bernie? Tosha, what would you do? I I just wanted to say that in the other position where Bernice said that we play uh, G5, uh, uh -huh. it would be blocking the rook, which would give Black a chance to defend the king. 
Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Do you like Night 82 to F4 even better? Okay. Yeah, maybe. Um, it's white to move, Aurelia. Um, otherwise, Queen G7 looks like, yeah, pretty smart idea for Black because maybe trading Queens will make life more easy for, th for them. And also, they can be move then get their Knight back into the game with Knight C7 and maybe um at some point that pawn will become weak but it's it's white it's white's move not black's move yeah this is very logical also this is uh i mean here yeah. you can use logic for example if you are white as well because we you can do exactly uh what she did here that she could figure out the, the next move for black because the next move for black is very likely that it's, it's that it's going to be queen g7 because there is logic behind that for example when you are under attack, then usually you need to to slow down the tempo, and a way to do that is to exchange, remove the queens. That's usually a very good idea to survive an attack. And so, if you are white here, you know that black wants to do queen g7. Then you can look for ways of how you can take advantage of that move. You know what do you need to do if you you pretend that you have two moves here because that's basically what you have what two moves would you do to counter queen g7 because queen g7 is what they're gonna play so g4 for example is an excellent idea because then the, the bishop if it moves to d7 that's uh, very bad because then they stop the queen g7 and then you can actually deliver checkmate uh, like this so that's a checkmate so they have to go to c8 which is the starting square, which is also not great. And then you can once again come with your, your knight here. For example, now to, to get the knight to g5 is very appetizing. And yeah, well, you can do that, definitely. And then you're going to get h7. So that's a good idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you can also try and get rookie one in at some point. And then if queen g7, we take, take and have rookie seven check. So the problem is the bishop having to come back to c8 is kind of a disaster because it also keeps Elizabeth's rook out of play. So yeah, what, whatever black does, you basically do knight g5 and you are, you are winning. Maureen, are, are you here? Are you here, Maureen? Did you want to make a comment since this is your game? Because you played really well up to this point. Um, and the, the, the next move is, is a big mistake. I mean, you could say knight d5 in itself was a mistake, but this one also, um, you know, did give up a decent amount of your advantage because white was able, black now, instead of making the bishop on f5 a problem, you just allowed her to get traded off and then get a tempo, right? So uh, there was some really, really strong play up till now, but this is where Elizabeth started to um, come back. Right. Although she played queen g7 first. Yeah, and here black gets what black wants, basically yeah. some exchanges. And when you are attacking, and when you have the initiative and development advantage, you shouldn't trade pieces. No exchanges. That's that's a very important thing because when you exchange off pieces, you help your opponent. So that's yeah, what that's happened a, here. Yeah, that's a really important um, you know lesson in general. And I think even here, after queen g7, it's not too late. You don't have to trade queens. You could still go back. Um, I think I'd still do that because now I, if I give it a little time to reconfigure my pieces, maybe I still have some attacking chances. Um, but in the game, uh, the trades were made and Elizabeth got at some point she got an edge I'm not sure when well so there's king g7 here and so you don't have time to play your rookie seven move because she's attacking your rook and then when she plays knight c7 if you played rookie seven she can block with a rook well black should have played rook e8 instead of rook f8 there uh, it was also because when it's, uh, there's an open file take it yeah uh, like yeah. here here black played rook f8 instead which was a mistake you should go or that, that's that's a very important thing uh, if you go back to moves like, like here, yeah. open file take it yeah that's something that comes up a lot in my system right right bernice you have to take it you have to take it the rooks they belong on open files 
So the knight can't develop easily now, and yeah. it's no longer that exciting to play knight h3. Yeah, and, and then the knight is on the edge, on the rim. Well, uh, this is probably the best move anyway, because you can do rook d2 now and nine knight f2 knight d4. Because this is this is a little bit what we talked about before, you know, the logic again. Well, where does the knight belong? That's usually how I find the best squares for the, for the knights. That you check where does the knight belong? Oh, it belongs on e4 because on e4 it blocks the e file that black controls and it threatens the weak d6 pawn uh, and it's in the center. The knights are always best in the center. The knight on a uh, knight on a rim is dim, is usually a saying that you have in all those books. Uh, and here white has a chance to play rook d2 and follow it up with knight f2, knight e4. Yeah, and get back in the game. It's still a quite good position, actually. But uh, so maybe the, after knight h3, we should improve our play here. We can start yeah. fighting. King g7 is probably the best way to go. And then, yeah, this this is a complex position because black also has this b5 IDs, and it, it's very yeah it's a tricky position. You know, this knight's it's, not it's... good. That's why white still has some chances here, even though uh, blacks played well. The uh, white has some chances because the knight on a6 is also a weak piece. But, you know, I think we should maybe move on. We, let's summarize the lessons from this game because I do want to look at a couple other people invited it um, and submit a game. So I want to look at them as well. But I think the summary is that a lot of mistakes happen when it comes to exchanges, right? So we, we saw a couple errors with exchanges. The first notable one was knight d5. So this is a mistake because if Elizabeth had defended with bishop d5, it would be immediately um, okay for her. Um, whereas if you had played a little bit um, more cagely, then your position's very strong. Um, also, you missed e5, which was really strong, but okay, that's two. And then uh, the other one was this move, bishop d3, instead of trading, which helps her, playing g4 and uh, pushing her all the way back would lead to a really good position for white. So very yeah. instructive game, good stuff, and good one to submit, Maureen. I'm I'm sorry that you ended up losing it because you played well in the opening, but a good one to submit. Um, did you want to add anything, Pontus? No, no, okay. no it's it's uh, it's important. We we should we have more games, so we we should uh, move on. I yeah, mean, I think the most important things are set. E four, E five. This one's from Ivy. Is Ivy back? Maybe I'll look at Laurel's if Ivy's not back. I, Ivy said she had to use the bathroom real quick. Let's see. Well, she's she's around, I think. Oh, you're back. Okay, you're back, Ivy. Good, good. Okay, so this one you were playing white, and let's go for the opening real quick. So you play this line, and now this is heavy theory. <laughs> it's uh, very theoretical. It's this is a it's a line. It has been played many times and it's it's uh, it's good. Okay. This knight takes e5 is a very nice tactic that uh, is is you have it in many openings, even in in Jennifer's beloved dragon, <laughs> she will find the same tactic. In some lines there where okay. the white castle's short. So what is the so, best move here? That's a question. I would say probably queen d4 or, or there is also some sharp stuff, but. Uh, um there is sometimes there is queen g for this kind of position as well but i think here it's better to stay out from it because uh it's, it's, it's playable actually instead of bishop d2 oh no i'm saying um it's white it's black's move what should black do here is a question for them yeah, but white has a couple of options before there uh, oh yeah yeah, yeah 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 for it's sure actually um yeah, black can play queen d4, maybe queen f3, right? Yeah. Queen g4 is also actually even playable. It's, it's a very, very weird move, but uh, it, it actually is playable. It's a super weird move. But uh, the thing is that all pieces are hanging. So you can do that. So you have to be careful, exactly, here. Bishop d2 looks like a logical move, but it's actually not good. Can anybody figure out why this is not a good move? So think about this for a minute, ladies. What can Black do here? Take advantage. Black played a really good move in the game. Black to move. Oh, Tosha's got her hand up. I'll give people another one minute, though. 
Okay, uh, Tosha, what do you think you would do here for Black? Uh, I think I would play Bishop C5 because then uh, it gives you like an, a chance to uh, do a fork with the queen and the rook. Don't forget though, knight e4, right? So if you play Bishop C5, I can just take a knight. So you gotta do something about that first. Otherwise, I, you know, I like trying to hammer on the F2 square, but you're not protected at the moment for that. Um, I think Ivy knows because she played the game. Anyone else? Laurel, white. Oh, I think you were talking about last move, Laurel. Um, Black's move now. Bernice? What would you do, Bernice? Knight captures H2, uh, F2. Very nice. Knight captures F2 and after King F2? Bishop. X C three. Okay, and now after Bishop C three. Queen H four. Queen H four. Look at that tactic. Beautiful. Um, what themes does this tactic show? There are a couple themes. I'm writing a tactics book right now. Bernice, there's you have a position on it. Um and Laura, I think you have one too. So what themes does this tactic show? Fork. That's one, Laura. Beautiful. Um, anyone else? There's one other. That's not really like a tactical I'll, I'll give it to you because discovered attack. Is there a discovered attack here? Let me think. Um, in a, I guess if you use a different move order, maybe. Um, but it's mostly fork and uh, removal of the defender. Yeah, Sophia, excellent. You actually said that before I did. So there's three. I say there's three things. There's removal of the defender because we're moving knight here that attacks this, and there's fork. And I'd say the other third thing that I just would encourage you to use to improve your tactical awareness is that when there's an uncastled king and when there are loose pieces, that's where the chances of tactics coming up are higher. So notice that if this bishop on a4 weren't unprotected. Um, after bishop c3, there would be no tactic, right? So if it was on b3, there'd be no tactic. Um, if white were castled, there'd be no tactic. So uncastled king, loose pieces, those are things like, I should think even longer in this position to see if there's a tactic. All uh, right, so- I think yeah. queen, H, queen h4 is even stronger. It's queen h4 stronger. right away. Um, is that stronger? I think it's even stronger, actually. Because- um... You, you you lose a piece. Why can't we play? Wait a second. I'm trying to think if we can play. So if we play G3, what if we play G3? Because you don't have you knight G3. We do have. Knight ah G3. yeah, you you just lose a pawn. Yeah, yeah. You can take on C3. Knight takes C3 now. You can play knight takes c3, and then after... You have to take on h4 now, I think. Yeah, I have to take on h4. Well, and Otherwise, now... Otherwise, queen e4. And then, no, you can take... Uh, yeah, you can take like this, but... Yeah, this is actually... It's true. It's... it's this is... Just a position you know, bad structure, yeah. but you, you are active. So, this is true. Queen h4 c3, it seems like there should be some kind of in-between move here, but there's not. Yeah. So, um, yeah, but of course the tactical alertness. And by the way, I think bishop c3 right away also works. I mean, similar idea, right? Ah, yeah. The, the, well, you, here... Or queen no, a you can't do queen h4. You can't do that, yeah. Queen d4 probably works, no? Ah, c5 maybe. Well, this is, the, this is uh, crazy. There's a, a lot, lot of different of options here, yeah. Um, Actually, it looks like it's really strong. Uh, and then c5. Looks really strong. Looks like you're winning. Because if queen e3, knight c3 just picks up the yeah. piece. Yeah. This is what I wanted to get in. Uh, oh, yeah. If we had, if we really had to, we could go here. I think you have to take b takes. Uh, yeah. And then you, but then you, then you still have this. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. That looks, that looks very good. So you, you, so you can, yeah. This is probably even an improvement because yeah. you have a terrible structure up there. Uh, with the pawn, with, since you took with the pawn now, it's it's so white is even worse. But it's uh, it doesn't really matter. I mean, you had what well, black has. The, knight takes f two is the probably the most practical, easy solution. Yeah. Where you cannot uh, miscalculate. Here you can get some nasty surprise. <laughs> so very nice move by your opponent. And now I don't understand what happened here. They played knight d one. Is that real? 
because it's so strange that somebody would be smart enough to play knight takes f2 and then just um and then just hang their piece the next move but i guess it happens maybe it was like a mouse slip or something i think this was a also they're rating 1500 but anyway very interesting just to show us like the tactical uh motif but of course now you are um up uh a now you're up a, a piece so okay well i just want to show the beginning of that game there was something interesting in this game i think although i want to move to laurel's game real quick and if we have time we'll go back to a second one of ivy's games uh because we would love to take a look at a few more um okay thank you ivy for showing us that cool tactic though this one i really liked something in it. there was something really interesting in it so we've got a king's indian defense Hello, Laurel, by the way. She's in there. I don't think Aria is here. Aria, where, where, where is this game from, Laurel? This is from the East Amateur Open Tournament in New Jersey. It's like oh, the okay. Was your opponent a grown-up or a kid? She was in college. Okay. Yes. Oh, kind of in between, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't like this uh, Knight H5 so much, if you go back there. Yeah, because this is usually what you play. Um, but here, uh, usually the whole idea for black there to give the bishop is to play on the dark squares. Mm -hmm. So you, you usually play uh, here. There are a couple of weird moves that can can be uh, interesting. Um, e five is definitely one of them. Like and ideas to, to uh, basically lock the position a little bit because you you want to give up your bishop and so you want to take on f3 and white has a choice here d5 is the most common and here uh there is once again bishop takes f3 for example bishop takes f3 and here there there is this kind of pawn sacrifice that is played sometimes knight d4 uh bishop takes this this take and you have like this position. And I would say after knight d7 and rook e8 is another move. Uh, that is, those two are played. There is some compensation. And the whole idea is that uh, you can make a move like queen d2 or something. Yeah, okay. I just want to show that like if you don't protect it now, this move is crushing, right? Yeah. Yeah. And then black has the upper hand, so white has to move the queen. And then, like a move like knight d7, for example. This is uh, this is typical things that are played. Uh, I would say mostly at high level, because black has some compensation. Because if we compare the the two bishops, then white's bishop is quite useless. Um, black bishop is really really strong, and the knight is coming to c5. Uh, and then usually strengthen that knight with a5, so so it's so white can never play b4 as well. And then black has some conversation. Yeah, that's something uh, else you learn in my system, right, Bernice? The out the outpost knight, right? Yes. So there's like a real outpost knight that can't be protected by pawns, but there's also like kind of like a quasi outpost knight. Like if uh, let's just make a bad move for white, um, and say we play with a couple more bad moves for white just ignoring this for a second i should actually just move my king just to show the um show the uh demonstration if we uh play this it's very difficult to do this right and you can't play a3 now because it would be a knight b3 fork so it takes a lot of effort now for white to try to ever get rid of this knight right um and yeah, and, and, and a move that you shouldn't be afraid to make as well is actually bishop takes c3 which is uh, uh, can be a crucial idea sometimes to just take back the pawn. So here, for example, black is threatening that. Bishop takes yeah. c3, and then so, knight takes e4. And let's say you make a b3 or something for, for white. Then we take on c3, and, and knight takes. And now, for example, if, if white parts with the bishop, then black has the e5. Uh, so black is totally fine here. And if uh, white doesn't part with the bishop, let's say they move the queen to d4 or something, 
then you have a move like queen f6, for example, which is a great move. And after the queen exchange, you secure a good knight versus a bad bishop because now the knight is gonna reshuffle to like e5 or c5 even better. And then it, if you have a knight like that on that stands on the dark squares against a light square bishop with all the pawns on the same color, then this bishop is, is gonna have a very tough task there in the end game versus the, the knight. And the king, the black king, can just walk up to g7, f6, after a rook, uh, two rook exchanges, e5, d4, c3, and, and all you do everything on the dark squares. And this is basically the whole uh, point with openings like Perk and, and King's Indian, that black plays a lot on the dark squares, the dark square complex. You try to take over those. Yeah, very important. Um, Laurel, um, any thoughts on that? Because it is this is a really important idea. Like I, I'm sure you have some ideas in the King's Indian that uh, revolve around um, playing e5 and knight h5 and f5. But uh, in this position, it did seem like you you kind of enter into like a slightly passive construction when you don't get a chance to play either e5, yeah. c5, or f5. The so, other idea, actually, that you can do, uh, let's show this quickly as well, because instead of knight h5, let's go knight d7 instead. This is a, this is like, if you don't want to sacrifice a pawn like this that I showed, then this is the same thing, basically. And the whole point now is that, let's say we make queen d2 here, which is a normal move. I think many will do h3 as well. Then, now you can take on f3, and bishop takes, and let's do e5 now. Where did you say? Pawn e5. Okay, I thought you said e5. Yeah, all right. And then d5. And you have the same thing, but better version. Yeah. Because now we don't lose any pawn. Yeah, we don't lose a pawn. That's right. That bishop now is protecting the pawn. But you see, it's the same kind of concept, Laurel, that you're playing on the dark squares. Knight h5, I'm guessing your idea was to... Was your idea also to play e5? Or was it to try to play f5, Laurel? I think it was probably e5 first. I didn't want to play it before because I think I was worried about trading queens and I didn't want to do that. But yeah, looking back, it doesn't really do much. The other problem is that when they, the biggest problem is the knight on h5 becomes a bit of a liability because when you try to play bishop f3 and e5 and bishop takes h5 is threatened, right? So that's kind of like a pain in the butt for your whole plan, right? That, uh, um, you know, famously Fisher allowed bishop takes h5, but this position is a little different because the queen would also be protecting that square. So just like to make a point, like if your opponent played, um, uh, like some move here, like rook c1, and you tried to play bishop f3, bishop f3, and e5, now d5, knight d4, like there's a bishop takes h5 annoyance here. So it's not the same position, right? Whereas when the knight's tucked away on um, d7, none of the, that, none of that exists, right? So it's just a bit of like a problematic placement of your piece. Makes sense. Although maybe there's some way, yeah, unfortunately, like if you could somehow justify it by getting your knight to f4, that could help, but it doesn't seem like the sequencing quite works out, but let's see, um, because they played h3 right away. Yeah. So there's no time. Because what I'd like to do is get your knight to f4 with e5, but it doesn't seem like you can quite make the timing work. Um, because if bishop f3, bishop f3, bishop h5 is coming right away. Yeah, no time. Um, so instead you played bishop d7, but now, you know, there's a, not, a, not a great, a lot to say that's good about your position because uh, you don't have a crux on the center yet and your knight is off sides. So they certainly yeah, have to draw. D, D5 here is a very problematic move if white finds this. Yeah. Because then you don't have, it, the logical move is knight E5, but then you can see this problem with knight here. Uh, so knight H5 is, is uh, it doesn't really belong. It's a normal move in King's Indian, but it doesn't belong here. In, in Usually when you have played Bishop G4, you shouldn't combine it with, with knight H5 because those two moves, they don't go, well together yeah then you have to play knight d7 for example in this, the same position that that we shared before is, is a great move yeah you actually had the right idea in a way laurel that you wanted to get your yeah. bishop out and maybe at some point f5 you might need want to play uh, more likely e5 but it, you had the right idea in some sense it's just the wrong placement of the knight 
Um, so let's move on. Knight h5, h3, bishop d7. A3 um, seems like a move that lets you back into the game because um, now you get to play e5. And after d5, you don't have time to play knight d4 here, do you? I'm trying to make the sacrifice work, but it seems like it'll be okay for your opponent. So you play knight e7. And now after knight h2, you do have knight f4. So your opponent uh, made a couple of errors that I feel like have gotten you back into the game, which is great. Ooh, that, that, that's a very um, uh, bold decision by white uh, to just take the knight because white was annoyed by the knight. But the problem is usually that if you take this knight, um, the black bishop becomes really, really strong on g7 again. So that's, and so now, the position looks really nice, I would say, for black. Yeah, big mistake by white not to play d5 earlier, for sure. And now you made the interesting move. So let's see, what could you do here? You could play bishop e5, but then you thought maybe knight f3. So you decided to play f5 right away and allow queen takes f4. Okay. Yeah, it's very, very aggressive. Uh, I, I think it was better to to be a bit materialistic there and go g5 yeah because once again we have to look at our position that our knight on e7 is not ideally placed where do we want it that's a question where, where what's the best square for this knight on e7 it's nice when our materialism actually matches with our positional sense right it's like materialism yeah. that really gets uh to the heart of the matter which is improving one of our pieces so it's like uh you know win-win i would say right um when we call somebody materialistic it's usually an a slur like we're saying like oh you know you don't care enough about the position of your pieces right but here it's just a a move that uh is good for every reason um because it, it maintains a pawn and it uh allows you to start conquering the dark squares so yeah and what square the, should the knight head for? Well, I mean, uh, what what square? Because we can see here in this position, we can see that the e7 knight is blocking black's whole attack and black's whole play. So where do we want that? If you can just choose a square here on the uh, and on put the it board, in the chat, yeah. Where will you put it? So where would you put it? Uh let's see. Who's saying? Are people saying in the chat? Let's see. Both pieces are pretty active. Chat, put it on the chat, guys. Uh, yeah, C5. E5, E5 is a C5 or E5. E5 is the best square. Um, so, uh, with that said, you know, you can, should look for ways. How do I get it to E5? And then G5 is the logical way because then you can go from G6 to E5. And then basically you get your dream position. And this is logic. Yeah, exactly. So another example of what, you, yeah, of what you said about your strengths. Yeah, earlier in the class, exactly. Yeah. Um, so because we... Black's position, the, the, the dark square bishop of g7 is perfect. The light squared one on, on d7 is also quite good. Um, as good as it can be because it doesn't have any good diagonals. This is the only one it has. But you are missing, you know, the queen and, and uh, the, um, perhaps some 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 rook. And then in order to get that, you need to get your knight to e5. That's like the key of the position. Yeah, it's very, very nice, um, we said, Pontus. And I like how earlier in the lesson you coincidentally taught us about logic being one of your strengths and that it, you felt like I'll put you apart from people of your own strength. And I think that uh, you're showing it here with some of these analyses. Now I'm gonna skip over a little bit because unfortunately for Laurel, uh, White did get a really good position, but she was able to come back later on. Um, but, and I, there's a really instructive part later that I, I kind of want to focus in on. So how did she get a bad position? Well, her opponent was able to uh, sink that knight into E6. And there's no time to play bishop h6 because knight f7 check is on the board. Um, yeah. so. and, and you could see that that, that Laura was struggling with the knight. That was the problem. That she was the, during all those moves here that we saw the last uh, six, seven moves, 
she was struggling. She was even she even went through G eight mm -hmm. to get the knight into the right position. And yeah. if you had played G five earlier, it would have been in the right position in two three moves. Now it took a lot of moves, and it still was not in the ideal position. Right. Although I guess here maybe we could stick it on F five here. Yeah, that that yeah. that's a better a better idea actually. But still, the the problem is the knight. And this is the thing, you know, that a huge tips is to look at your pieces and try to improve them. Try to identify the worst place piece and try to picture where do you want it instead. And many times that would lead you to the right move. And I mean, the big problem is here we're down a pawn for, we don't have enough compensation for it. So we could put our knight here and we probably have more compensation than we had in the game. But, uh, you know, we, we need to really show why we're down a pawn. Remember, we gave up a pawn when we played that move at five, right? Um, oops, I, I think I accidentally closed my... Oh, no, I, I wanted to admit somebody. Okay, Melinda. Um, so that is a problem that we're down a pawn. And at this point, our position is actually even worse. You played c5, presumably with the idea that if on passant, we win the piece. But of course, on passant is not required. That would be an interesting little rule change. Every time you offered on passant, they were forced to take it. I feel like then then c5 would just be winning, right? Uh, but instead, uh, she played this move knight b5. Or is it he or is she? I, Ari is a she, right? Yeah. Um, okay. That's cool. There's not a lot of college women who play chess. It feels like it's something that people... And we, if we look at the statistics in the United States, people really drop out first in high school, but then later in college. So nice to see Aria continuing to play. Well, they were like an all girls team. So. Oh, we, nice. From what school? Um, Carnegie Mellon. Carnegie Mellon. Very nice. That's a great school. Computer science. And well, I think just in general, it's a very good math, computer science. Um, overall, it's a really good school. Um, they did a lot of stuff with AI in both chess and, and other games as well, like Go and Poker. So pretty cool. That's very good. That's a very good thing. Also, to have an all-girls team is also a good, good idea. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Laurel is really good with that. Okay, now, that, now the game gets really interesting. So what's going on here? Like, White is still up a pawn, but now Laurel is threatening to take on F2, right? Um, but I think, you know, there's a lot of decent ways to protect it. Maybe we could put our knight on e4, or we could put a rook on e2. But here, your opponent chose to play knight f3, which is like oh. a very, very unusual way to do it. In fact, I would say, like, it shows a lack of uh, fear by your opponent, and I don't mean that in a good way. <laughs> <laughs> like, we want people to be confident, but we don't want them to be uh, uh, completely fearless in chess because... A little bit of fear is a good thing, right? Like, look at Pontus. As soon as we play the move knight of three, he's like, oh. <laughs> yeah, this is. The uh, radar goes, right? This is, uh, this is good. Because usually when you are struggling, you know, if you can change the rhythm, the course, mm -hmm. the course of the game, if you can change the course of the game in some way, that's a very good way to, to unbalance the position and get your opponent a little bit out of rhythm. Because sometimes when, when you are, you know, better or winning and things are going smooth, then people, a lot of people in the world can play very good chess. But it's when those kind of, uh, you can say, unexpected moves come and the, where you suddenly have to go from a technically winning position to a position where you have to defend, that can be very hard for people. So here there is a move that can actually change the, the course of the game and put white on defensive. Yeah, I think uh, Charmaine has it. Charmaine, good. Charmaine, where are you from, by the way? You talk, Cause I, I don't recognize that name from our previous classes. Welcome Charmaine and excellent. Rook takes F3 was played. By the way, Laura also played that. Um, and then after GF3, Queen takes H3, excellent. And then uh, your opponent realized that she's gonna be in trouble if she doesn't get some defender in. So she played queen g5, trying to get her queen into the defense. And then uh, Laura said, hey, I'm going to get another piece into the game, rook f8. Because if we play rook takes f3, um, depending on whether or not rook e8 check, 
is a threat that's mating. Well, we, we could be mating ourselves. So she wants to get another piece into the game. Excellent. And now this is the moment I wanted to get to. So queen g2 was played by your opponent. Now, what should black do here? Some important moment. Because they're offering us a trade of queens, um, but uh, there's also a way we could take a pawn. We could take a pawn in multiple different ways. What's the best move here? Uh, I should make a poll for this, actually. Do I have time? Let's see. Or er, uh, where is my? Because there's a few moves here that like all seem reasonable, right? Like. Queen takes queen, rook takes pawn, queen takes pawn. Anything else? Everybody put their move in the chat that you would play. Let's just put your move in the chat. I wanna have a high participation rate here. You can have another 30 seconds, but Okay, rook takes pawn is Maureen's move. Rook takes f3 is also Evie's move. Rook takes f3 is Bernice's move. Anything else? Well, Laurel in the game played something else. Well, you can kind of see because I'm not hiding it. She played queen takes f3. Um, anybody see a problem with rook takes f3? Because I can see you're threatening like bishop f2. That looks amazing. But why is this uh, any problems with this move? They play rook e8. Yeah, rook e8. Or, I mean, rook e8 check first. Or, and then here, um, what, what can I do? After rookie eight check, what would you do? Anyone? So that technically, white white is up with material. And yeah. What should you do when you are up? What's the general advice that when you're what should you do material, when you're up? material, you exchange. Yeah, exchange pieces. So, so what's the logic here? Queen. Yeah, queen takes queen is a logical move here. Yeah, queen takes queen. And then you can take another pawn as well here with rook e7 and rook takes b7. And suddenly from b7, the rook, the rook defends uh, everything. So queen takes queen is, is, is the logical move because we, we are up. Mm -hmm. And if we are up, then we want to exchange. And the other thing is we we get the rook away from this attack, right? Yeah. And then and now we now we can start munching. And it's not going to be that hard to protect against it later if we really need to with rook f1, rook g3, king h2, rook f3, king g2. We can defend. A rook is strong, but it's not a queen. We're not going to be made it on g3. So um, yeah, that uh, queen rook takes f3 is is that a bad move. I think white would be clearly winning. Laurel's move was somewhat better, but it's not the best move. And this is a really important moment. And I think it came up in the other game that we were looking at, right? With Maureen against Elizabeth yeah. Cassidy, where we're trying to keep the queen on when we're attacking. So exactly. If so we're attacking, we want to keep the, the, the pieces, you know? We don't want to exchange of pieces when we are attacking. So what's the strongest move here? Strongest move. This three is really times F three. No, that's uh, what she did. She did do that. She played queen F three and she won a pawn. And I, I sympathize with it because she's like, okay, well now I'm only now I've got a pawn for the exchange, and also I'm threatening F two at the end of the line. So and she did end up drawing the game somehow. Um, but uh, the problem is rooks are so good in the end game, um, and there's just a and better. Also, count the material. You know, if you count the material, we can see here that okay, we win a pawn. But we are actually down. Even if we win that pawn, we are down material-wise. 
Yeah, I think maybe, you know, the other thing is Alpantis, I think maybe when she saw this position, she thought like, she maybe got overexcited because she's attacking F2, she's attacking B2, and she's threatening Rook G3. But the thing is, Rook G3 is not even really a threat. You know, it's like I said, a Rook's not a queen. You have a pin here and that's cool, but like nobody's going to give you any medal for that. Yeah, uh, no, and, and there is there is uh, quite a lot of compensation in this position. So it's because you can always put like the bishop on e5 and then it's very yeah. hard to, to get anywhere for white. And the pawns can start moving and the king can approach the center. So I, I can see her drawing this, but after, if you go back, like two Rookie moves, two is an excellent move by your opponent. Oh, like rookie two is a really good move. Maybe she missed that because rookie two protects this pawn, protects this pawn and keeps the rook in the game. Yeah. Um, and rook g3, just nothing. Like it's not a threat, right? You know, if, yeah. if anything in the game, like look at her, just wiggle her king out beautifully. So you ended up struggling to get the draw here. I mean, she should probably be winning this somehow, but uh, you had some chances, so that's good. But if you go back, the cool thing here is that like, actually she's a little bit the one on the run if you play the right move. Um, so Zofia says queen f5. I mean, I think you can do a little bit better than that. Be a little bit more aggressive with queen h5, right? Yeah, queen h5 is better because then you threaten the f3 pawn and you want to take it with the rook you don't want to take it with a queen so we, we go first with the rook and also there's also extra ideas that sometimes uh it can also be that we can transfer we can put the bishop on e5 for example and then we can transfer the rook to to f5 and g5 it opens up a lot of uh active ideas here for us yeah i so, mean what yeah, what does black do? What does white do here, guys? I mean, this is not an easy position for white. White's in a bit of trouble. Like, what can white do? Because we can't play queen g4 and try to trade queens because now you will take this because you actually win the exchange back, right? And then you're going to be up a pawn in the end game. So that's cool. Like, I'm, I'm down. I'm. Are, are, you're going to be up a pawn, right? I think yeah. so. Uh, yes, you'll be up one pawn and maybe two because you might be able to play rook f4 at the end of the line. But uh, that that is not as good anymore. Uh, we can't play rookie three because the bishop's there. Um, if we try to attack ourselves, I think we only have the rook in the attack. That's not enough, right? So, yeah, the problem is that now it starts to get dangerous when the rook yeah. gets back, like rook f5 and rook, rook g4. Uh, rook, g5, rook f5, rook g5 is, is a very dangerous plan. Like, like uh, yeah, you get up with uh, with the rook and and then you're losing, you know. I'm just you deciding between f4. Oh, you you wanted to do f5 yes. because there's yeah, no f5 right is the safest. Four, f5 yeah. is okay. the safest because then yeah. you have rook d5 coming. What if instead of you playing rook e2, they played rook f1? Rook f1. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, for sure. And then Better. you have this this position here uh, where you can play uh, rook f5, for example. And the problem is that now it starts to get really difficult to protect because if queen h2, we can take the rook. So queen g5 check, and you win the rook. Yeah. It looks like we might even be lost lost here. Very crazy position. So so actually just the calm move, not taking any material back, queen h5 is like really promising for black. And now what should white do? So this kind of continues the circle. Like this, this is a cr crazy position because well, now what's the best move for white? And uh, the reason I wanted to end with this, Sujana, bye, great seeing you. The reason I wanted to end with this uh, is because it drives home the important point of the lesson, which Pontus eloquently stated, logic, black is attacking, white is desperate to get into the end game, right? So queen g4 was bad because we gave up two material. Is there any other way that we can try to get into the end game as white? Uh, Elizabeth, you we looked at your game earlier. Hello. Hi. What would you play here for white? Um. Let's see, somebody else? Well, you could try to start a 
attacking other pieces like pawns. Well, there's not that easy because the bishop's really well protected and the rook is nestled in the top of the position. By the way, I'm not sure, is that Ka Elizabeth Cassidy or the first name Cassidy? I'm not, I'm not sure, um, but uh, let us know in the chat, uh, Cassidy. Uh, queen g4 was Maureen's suggestion. Yeah, I want to trade queens, but this is giving up too much because you're also giving back the exchange, so black would be better. Um, Laurel, do you see anything your opponent could have maybe done here? I'm still looking. I don't see anything yet. Yeah, it looks pretty bad for black. I mean, for white, I think b white might have to res have to resort to playing, um, trying to. There is there is one move, uh, and it's a very difficult move uh, for a human, um, but it's actually belongs a little bit to what we what we have been saying because here, the logic is that we want to exchange queens. And we couldn't do it on g4 because we lose. We will lose the exchange then. So then you need to try the other squares where you can exchange the queens. That's the logic. So what yes. other squares can we actually offer a queen exchange? Oh, we need to say that there was rook f1. Rook f1, though, we... We were struggling with just like rook f5 trying to mate us, right? Yeah, th this is this is a very bad uh, position. Yeah. Because we can't move the f1 and we can't really defend against uh, the rook and the queen and the bishop. So yeah, that... we, we, are, we, are, we are looking at how can we exchange the queens. That's the only way to, to decrease the pressure. And yeah. we have some extra material. I mean, white is technically in this position up with an exchange. This means that we have we can afford to give back one pawn and still be up. And also we need to do that because otherwise we'll lose our queen or get mated or something bad. Melinda? So you need to try the other squares. Where can we offer a queen, queen exchange? Queen to H2. Okay, queen to H2. Very interesting indeed. Yeah, so she's trying yeah, to... Queen H2 is one option, but then after like queen takes F3, no, between queen takes F3, then F2 is under a serious attack. And once again, the rook is coming, you know, fast. So like if we go, now we have to do rook F1 because we need to protect our F2. Too. So if rook F1, then the rook will come again. So rook F4, for example, there. And now, now or rook f5, uh, both, both of them are good. But now we have problems again. Yeah, the, the rook is coming for us. The, the black has very, very good position. We're done. We're done here. We have to sacrifice yeah, so This doesn't and... work. So then we go back to the position. And all this you can actually do in your head as well. But um, your idea, I mean, the idea of this is 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 right, you know, because now, um, yeah. Yeah, and this white. is even a trap. Uh, yeah. So it's so, but but that's that's the right idea. But it doesn't work. So then the logic says we need to try another square because the Ivy? idea is correct, but it just didn't work. Ivy. So what square is left? What do you think, Ivy? Unmute yourself. Oh, I think. I think. Is it a a strange? Go ahead, Ivy. Um, Queen H two. Queen H two was tried. Um, Faith, I see you looking at the position. What do you think, Faith? Or Ivy, if you have another idea, where's another square? Because remember, Queen H two, Queen F three, huh? Yeah. Ah, Melinda, Melinda, hello, uh, Melinda. Where are you from, by the way? Because I don't think I've seen you in this class before. Queen H one is Melinda's yeah, suggestion. That's correct, because this is logic here that you have. If if you go back one move. Uh, here, this is the logic because we don't want to let 
we, we, we just don't want to give them f3 for free. We can give them f3, but then we want a queen exchange. And then you need to find the square where you can actually keep an eye on f3 and at the same time offer a queen exchange. And that's h1. So this is logic. And this you can can do. Okay, it's, it's it's difficult. I mean, I've been playing chess for thirty six years, so which is quite a lot more than your <laughs> your age. So so I I know this uh, because I've practiced a lot uh, throughout the years. But you can practice on this, and you don't have to from the start. You don't have to be on my level of logic. You can just start on a lower level of logic, and it will really help you during yeah. the game because think about what's important here like in this position every variation that we're trying here before is the f3 pawn we don't want to give that up without getting in a queen exchange and then it's it's like a math equation that you try to find you know the, the, what's what's the the move where we can keep an eye on f3 and at the same time offer a queen exchange and if we find that move that's going to be the right move it's amazing. I mean, this move like queen h5 is such a brilliant move. And then queen h1 is such a brilliant move, too. It's like it is it's not a it's it's like uh, Pontus said, this is a very um, deep. I want to say it's deep, but it's not that easy to find because they're very counterintuitive, these moves. And it's combining logic with calculation, like being comfortable with the fact that you're losing both pawns. Um, but you have tactical ways that you can make it so it'll be good for you regardless. Like, I saw two ideas here, and we, we, we can start going after pawns ourselves, or we can... Um, yeah, yes, rook e2 with the same trap here that we had yeah. before. It's and the best you, move, because and, that forces a, a rook exchange. Yes. And if we get this rook exchange, then, then uh, this end game is better for... for um, uh, for white it's not easy uh, it's, it's, it's still quite a tricky position you ah. have to go uh, rook f7 is better actually rook is f7 it? Is. see I was thinking if I play rook f8 and rook ah, yeah, you, you can, you can check. This, this is probably good as well this is this yeah. good as well because then you get it with check is even if it's those pawns on the king side are but you can't scary. take my pawn yeah that's what I was thinking whereas I was a little worried in this line that what happens if you take here and then just start. No, 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 you don't take. You don't take this. You don't take. You just, you just go a a uh, a four, for example. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, a four is really strong move. I see. Uh, oh, say so, so you're gonna get it later. So, yeah. So th this yeah. is the best line. Uh, the other line, uh, it's a bit scary actually because if you go rook f eight, like you wanted to do there, uh, and king g seven, rook. This looks good, but king f six is actually quite tricky, you know. And and then they start with h five. So they start running. Oh, those they, they're getting they're, a little bit of counterpart. Quite part. careful yeah. here, right? I think it, it could it works probably. Uh, I think it it should work, but <laughs> this is uh, once again you get this change in the position that you don't want. You know, suddenly we have to defend, and if we make a mistake, we're even gonna lose this. So. Yeah, whereas here it's good. It's always nice to have your opponent's king cut off. Yeah, because then they and have a very the, limited the, the counter when, by... when you cut off the king. Those two pawns and the bishop is going to be an easy match for the rook and the king. And if b6 now, we have rook b7, for example. Which yeah, is yeah. And then, then we are, we are here we are, we, are gonna, we are doing good, you know? And now we, yeah. our plan is to get our king up as well. We want to get the king up, so we want to move the king so we can face those pawns when they're coming as well. And yeah. Here, this is winning for, for, uh, uh, for white. Although I will say that in this position after queen h1, which would have been an amazing move, black could also check. Yeah, black, but that's probably black's best <laughs> yeah, move. Yeah. And then after queen g2, I, queen h5, it's a, it's a repetition. And well, you could play king f1, but. Uh, yeah, but I think it's also very dangerous, you know? Yeah. It's, uh, it's a dangerous. Very, very, but sure, you can, if white really wants to play on, but this, this is really dangerous uh, because then. You don't have any coordination. Uh, maybe like this or something. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. This is, this is three. And then C, if you lose C4 and D5, you know, then you are clearly losing. Fascinating game, though. But I mean, also, also, 
Yeah. Also, oh. if you, the king played, if they played king h1, then they can, they can take with the rook. They can take the pawn with the rook. Uh, wait, what do you mean? The after, oh, after queen h1, you're saying taking this pawn with the rook? Uh, no, when they play king f1. So, oh, 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 I see what you're saying. Um, after queen h1, oh, because no, because my wait, uh, you're saying queen h1, queen g5, king f1. Here, I can't take it because my queen's not on h5 anymore. Yeah, it doesn't work. But uh, after Jennifer's ID, queen d2, queen d3, then it does work. So, yeah, then now you're gonna take the yeah. and this is this is also logic that black wants to not attack only with the queen or only with the bishop rather with all the free pieces combined which you can see here that the queen is attacking the bishop on d4 is attacking and the rook on f8 is attacking all pieces great and, and then it doesn't really matter that white is actually up material wise because the white rook is on e2 is in a pin is useless the queen is on h1 is also completely useless at the moment and the other rook is on a1, it's passive, and it's also useless. So all the heavy pieces here, which is basically what white is up with, are not in use. So therefore, black is just clearly, clearly, clearly better here. Yeah, this is a great, this is a really instructive game. You know, it's amazing the lessons that you can take from real games. So thank you to Laurel, Ivy, and to uh, Maureen for submitting um, beautiful um, job. Thanks, Pontus, for all your wisdom. And I want you to think about what we asked in the beginning of the session, your confidence, the thing about your chess that's better than people that are even higher rated than you. And, uh, you know, try, I'll keep that Google document open. If you have any ideas, add them later, um, because it's really important. Get that sense of confidence by articulating to yourself what you're great at and what you're getting even greater at. Um, Laurel, yeah, you because comment? all of you are good in something, you know, and and you all all chess players have some good abilities, you know. So the, so it's always uh, and and you can if you basically get the games into your area where you are strong, you know, then of course you have you can beat players who are like two, three, four hundred points stronger without a problem, because the, not everyone. The, the, the ones that you play with, they are not totally complete chess players either. So they always have some weak areas. You are not playing with Magnus because he hardly has any weak areas. And that's also why he's the best player in the whole world. But and the ones that you are playing against, which is everyone else apart from Magnus, they always have weaknesses. Even if it's grandmasters, they also have weaknesses weak areas and and then if you get to your strong area then you can be better than that exactly and you can feel confident when you sit down because you're yeah. aware of all the things that you're good at so how, how, how many points did you score bernice in the tournament which one the one that you won the championships because you played with girls that are six years older than you how many points did you score eight out of eight yeah eight out of eight you know you see and you can only do that if you're confident you know and it's this and all you girls here can do that you can also next tournament you know you can also win a lot of games beat people and there so it's important to bring out what you're good at you know think positive you have the chance Exactly. And even if you lose a game in, in there, then the tournament is not over. Or you are not bad at chess because you lose one game. Everyone makes some mistakes here and there. So the important thing is to keep a positive mind and think about what you're good in. Absolutely. And if you lose a game, go back to this list and read it again. Yes, love that. Exactly. And make your own list. Laurel, did you have a comment? Because we were just going over your game. Not really. Thank you for looking at it. You're welcome. You're welcome. Thanks for presenting such an, a rich game and uh, have a wonderful week, everyone. Keep posting um, 
you know, games in the chat and updates in the chat in your summer and different things you're confident about um, because, uh, yeah, you guys are are definitely crushing and it's beautiful to see. Yeah, yes, yes, keep going, you know, and you have many tournaments upcoming now for the summer season where there's a lot of tournaments, especially in the States, there's really a lot of them. Yeah. Uh, you have all these World Open and... Uh, US Open, and, and, National uh, yeah, Open. The endless of tournaments. There's also many, many tournaments, you know, to play. So, yes, get out there, beat some people, and send us the games, and, and update us also in the chess.com club when you have some interesting game or when you win something. You can always also send it to Jennifer. So yeah, can bring some up in next class. Exactly. Let's do that. Yeah. So yes, just make sure. And also over the summer, we what we will do, we will have uh, uh, some a little bit older girls in our organization that will hold some, some tournaments. So there will be some online tournaments coming. So uh, uh, stay up to date. Um, in, it's always a good thing to check in the chest of com club uh there's gonna come something there yeah so it's absolutely. about you know, some online tournaments that we, we will do in the group so that you can play and a tips is also to play some uh, online blitz it's actually a very good way to improve your tactics and your speed uh, which can be useful when you play real games in tournaments. So that's that's a uh, huge tips from my end to try to play some some blitz games online. Oh, somebody asked where the chess.com club is. Let me add that link real quick. And um, yeah, good job, everyone. Talia, you said you're great at tactics and attacking. Love to hear that. That's that's one that uh, we we hear a lot from young people. And yes. Keep it in mind. Um, Charmaine, let me, I'm just gonna pull up the club real quick and uh, everybody else just uh, say um, goodbye as you leave and have a wonderful weekend. Thanks again for being such great students today. Keep crashing. I just posted in the, the chat, Charmaine, join that club link. Bye everyone. You're welcome, Laurel. Thanks for speaking Bye. Thank you for the. Thank you for the lesson. You're Bye. welcome, Tosha. Good job.